Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our evening prayer service. Um, folks, uh, some folks enjoyed uh, the evening prayer liturgy, so we, we're going to try to continue that. Uh, to help Liz and Jeff in the recording, though, we're going to try to keep it shorter so they don't have to do any post-production. So I'm going to, instead of a sermon, I'm going to read from Philip Yancey's book called Grace Notes, which are just little devotional excerpts from his many different um, um, books. So I hope that will be edifying for you and, uh, and that you will be blessed by the prayers. If you have a prayer book at home, Book of Common Prayer, we start on page 18. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most cheaply so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace. And almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. 
Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And I invite you to say along together with me Psalm 23, which is found on page 356. Many people may have it found just in their hearts. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He shall feed me in a green pasture and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. He shall restore my soul and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of them that trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the first chapter of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, beginning to read at the third verse. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound unto us, even so our comfort also aboundeth through Christ. Here endeth the first lesson. And we say together the Magnificat on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the second lesson is taken from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning to read at the 14th verse. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd, and I know mine own, and mine own know me, even as the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall pluck them out of my hand. Here endeth the second lesson. And we reply together with the words of the Nunc Dimittis on page 22. Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon Thee. Endue Thy ministers with righteousness, and make Thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save Thy people, and bless Thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And, o God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we being defended from the fear of our enemies may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The uh, Bible readings today especially it's obviously in the first reading about comfort, uh, God's comforting love and mercy in our lives uh, and uh, comforting others. Uh, and so I'm going to read uh, Philip Yancey uh, and it's called Shared Suffering. Sometimes the only meaning we can offer a suffering person is the assurance that their suffering, which has no apparent meaning for them, has a meaning for us. My wife worked with some of the poorest people in the city of Chicago, directing a program of LaSalle Street Church that intentionally seeks out lonely and abandoned senior citizens no one else cares for. Many times I have seen her pour herself into a senior citizen's life, trying to convince the senior that it matters whether he or she lives or dies. In such a way, she graces their suffering. One man Janet worked with, 90-year-old Mr. Cruder, refused cataract surgery for 20 years. At age 70, he had decided that nothing much was worth looking at, and anyhow, God must have wanted him blind if he made him that way. 
Maybe it was God's punishment for looking at girls as a youngster, he said. It took my wife two years of cajoling, arguing, persisting, and loving to convince Mr. Cruder to have cataract surgery. Finally, Mr. Cruder agreed. For one reason only, Janet impressed on him that it mattered to her, Janet, that he regain his sight. Mr. Cruder had given up on life. It held no meaning for him. But Janet transferred a meaning. It made a difference to someone that even at age 92, Mr. Cruder not give up. At long last, the old man agreed to the surgery. In a literal sense, Janet shared Mr. Cruder's suffering. By visiting so often, she convinced him that someone cared and that it mattered whether he lived or died or had sight or not. That principle of shared suffering is the thesis of Henry Nouwen's book on the wounded healer. And perhaps the only sure contribution we can make to the meaning of suffering. In doing so, we follow God's pattern, who also took on pain. God joined us and lived a life of more suffering and poverty than most of us will ever know. Suffering can never ultimately be meaningless because God has shared it. Amen. Let us pray. In a moment of silence, we offer our own prayers to Almighty God. And be mindful, O Lord, of thy people bowed before thee, and of those who are absent through age, sickness, or infirmity. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, collect the scattered, and bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers, defend the widows, shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Succor all who are in tribulation, necessity, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us and those that hate us, and those that have desired us unworthy as we pray, are to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten, do thou, O Lord, remember, for thou art the helper of the helpless, the savior of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. Thou who knowest each one's need and hast heard their prayer, grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we also offer our prayers of thanksgiving for the Lord for the Lord's comfort and mercy and love in our lives, for all the good gifts he's bestowed upon us, we take time to say thank you. And Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and those you love, this day and forevermore. Thank you for worshiping the Lord uh, uh, this evening with me. God bless.